Wherever the tourist may cross the Swiss border, whether he comes by car or by cycle, whether he is on his way south or working northwards, whether he arrives alone or in pleasant company, at the wheel of a high-powered roadster that tosses the miles in succession over his shoulder, envy in the hearts of other drivers, always there lies before him the worthy Alps to be climbed, a gigantic barrier, but no one thinks of skirting it or turning back. It is for him that the engineer's skill has created those world-famed works of art, the Alpine roads, trace their course for hundreds of miles along the rocky slopes, and but them securely in the solitary vastness of nature. Maintained with care, they remain unaffected by heat or by cold, by snow or by ice, and their surface is one that all tires can grip. So that cars of low power may experience no difficulty in climbing the slopes, a certain gradient is never exceeded. And this explains, too, why the road was built with so many turnings. Today, the constructors of roads and bridges no longer seek to avoid the rocks and mountains. A modern road absorbs the obstacles in its path by means of numerous tunnels, slipping beneath the thunder of waterfalls, skirting the abysses, and cutting its way through the living rock. Here we are at the top of the pass, but now a depth of four feet of snow on either hand still makes a wall along parts of the road and stretches its ermine mantle across the flanks of the mountains. clear the road for us. The snow plough, loud voiced and efficient, aided by the patient work of the sweepers. Spring has already come into her own far down below in the valleys. She is even showing her first tokens up on the heights. But up here winter still holds sway, and it is thanks to them, the men and the machine, that we can motor over the passes at this early season. Many a car must have a breather on the way, a fine opportunity for stretching one's legs. And then up here there are so many things to see all around, a dam for example, holding the water from glaciers and ice peaks, feeding electric power to industry. And the alpine giants too, we never could see with such ease were it not for the roads thus constructed. And now we are again descending, following the quaint windings of the highway, which seem to be traced on the contours of the landscape with all the skill of an artist's hand. One single bend needs as much work of construction as a house in the town. Who could have imagined a few years ago that such monsters laden with baggage and passengers should one day be able to climb the Alps as a beetle scrambles over a pebble? Of course, the drivers must know their job. The first villagers appear. Passing along the torrent with its rushing waters, we arrive in the valley. No shortcuts for us. 
we cannot imitate the waterfall and leap from the brow of the rocks. Here we are back once more amid the unhurried vehicles of the plain. Castles arise before us. And after the castles, the vineyards where the vintagers are working or chatting while they sample autumn's luscious fruit for themselves. But we are climbing again, like all these people on foot, more and more of them all converging towards one spot. Where can everyone be going? There must be something well worth seeing around here. A mass of dazzling whiteness Yes, of course, it's the Rhone Glacier. Truly an awe-inspiring sight and well worth a pilgrimage, even on foot. And now is the time to show off your knowledge, if you've read up an encyclopedia beforehand. They are busy at the hotel nearby. For thanks to the Alpine roads, it is possible for such a hotel to do good business and offer us, if not all, at least a good many comforts. Though this, I'm afraid, is only water. But in such a spot, pure water is as good as champagne. And a simple picnic is as welcome to a keen appetite as anything that comes out of a grand hotel kitchen. Of course, one is not always alone. But who minds such a friendly looker on? Others think of touching up their beauty. I beg your pardon. Uh, yes, touching up their beauty. Oh well, with so many gentlemen about, we quite understand. And here are the views that only the road can offer us. Here, a venerable old castle perched on a hilltop. There, a lake alive with sails. Somewhere in the woods, an idyllic white tent. But keep your eyes ahead, driver. There's a train coming. After you, after you, coaches. Common politeness demands it, and so does the barrier. There's no hurry. We have plenty of time to stop and walk about whenever we feel like it. To go exploring, examine the trim houses and their picturesque mural decorations, discover the quaint features of the local architecture. A last look back at the pretty little village where we lingered for a while and then off once more. The waters of this torrent look inviting. What about a dip? It doesn't look cold, nor is it, for here we are already in the warm, sunny Ticino. This is the country for holidays, for bathing, for reading, for lazing in the sun where the villages are perched on the hillsides and the church bells ring out their peals for sheer joy. Here and there we pass a roadside chapel or perhaps a villa set in a verdant garden by the lakeshore. Glimpse a jump furrowing the mirror of the lake or a dashing speedboat and enjoy all the typical picture postcard views. with 
pavement cafes, idle strolls and white duck trousers. And when we abandon our alpine road and follow our route along the valley to the south, by the customs, we are even a little afraid of the customs officers. And then, alas, we leave Switzerland, this beautiful country with magnificent mountain roads. 